welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. And welcome to the extra time segment for Everton 1, Aston Villa 1. I'm joined by Teddy McAllister and Owen Parks for this one. And we're going to be looking back on yet another subpar Everton performance. Only this time we somehow got a point. Teddy, I'll start with you. Did you enjoy that yesterday? One thing I enjoy in it is the, uh, the words I'd use. It was... The manager said that we were going to get a response, didn't he? And and we, you know, we certainly did for twenty, 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah, that that first drinks break killed us right off. We, you know, the the effort. It's got to be said, the effort was an improvement from Wolves, but I don't think it could have been any worse. You know, the, the players seemed like they were, you know, they were bang up for the game and they wanted to prove a point. But then, once the drink break it and Villa got to grips with us. It came down to quality, and you know, like, like I said in the preview, Villa have got a much better midfield than us, and it showed. They just haven't got a striker who can score goals. Um, they if they had a, if they had an half decent striker, we'd have lost that game comfortably because they they would run in the midfield, and I feel like we talk about it every segment, every every show. The midfield just isn't up to up to up to scratch because even players who like it's weird like okay you know Andre Gomez and Bernard for example like even no one would say they were very impactful players even when they were playing like you know what a lot of people consider to be their best football they never really got involved in the goals or the assists or even the chances created but they were tardy footballers like Andre Gomez could keep the ball shield the ball recycle it Bernard <clears throat> You know, had a good, you know, good touch, and he was, you know, he linked up well with Luca Dean. The two of them at the minute, they, they, they're like, they don't seem like they've played before. Like they, every time they get it, they're losing possession and getting dispossessed. And it's just that uh, it's it's just compounded a lot of other issues. Like obviously we've got the injuries to the defensive midfielders in Delph and Gabamon, which you know been the case all along. But we could have really done without like players who you can usually rely on to at least you know keep the ball and, you know, move it on. And, you know, you don't want to rave about Bernard and Gomez, but usually you'd expect them to be better footballers than well, they have been. Usually, usually one of the better ones, yeah. But yeah, I mean, start. you couldn't add, I mean, I, I think, I think now, you know, you know, uh, Owen was a bit, of pariah, a bit of a pariah before the lockdown for calling Gomez, calling out Gomez on his... I'll tell you what. I was just about to say, yeah. Uh, We've got Owen on the show, so I think if, if anyone's going to be a Gomez distractor, I think we'll let him say his piece. Well, everyone, myself included, when they saw Owen, like, talking down about our Andre at first, like, what's this lad on? And now it seems like he was ahead of the game, doesn't it? Like, he's, he, he saw it before anyone else. But even even before, like, these games, like, all right, he, he didn't, you know, Gomez didn't, you know, move the needle. On the on the uh, the Al the Al stat, you know, he didn't contribute as much as many people thought he did. But even Owen, I'm sure, would say like he was a tidy footballer. He could keep the ball, he could pass, and he's it's totally deserted them. So I've gone off on a tangent on Gomez and Bernard, but basically the midfield got battered again, and we were lucky to get anything from the game, top and bottom of it. I, I saw a horrible statistic actually on Twitter last night, and it was Watford, of course. Uh, 17th in the league at the moment, barely stayed up by the looks of it. Um, and Andre Gomez has been dribbled past 159 times this season, which is more than Kapue, Decore, and Will Hughes combined. That's that reprobate with Luke McKenzie, isn't it? He's up to his old tricks, I see. <laughs> it's just, I think, was these the kind of things that you were skeptical of in the first place, Owen? When it comes to Gomez, well, before we bought him all, before lockdown. Yeah, I mean, before lockdown, when you first right. started calling him out. Well, it weren't much calling him out. It was this thing that we only needed one midfielder, and I put that issue to people and said, "No, we don't definitely only need one because Gomez is in the Esther mark too." And I've <laughs> said that I've never, no one's ever seen any evidence of this. He's all right on the ball; he can recycle it a bit, but pour him, pour him up in a proper battle, and he just goes high like the rest of them. And he had done for the previous eighteen months. He created one big chance in eighteen months before, before yesterday, where he created a couple. I don't know why he doesn't do that more often because he's pretty good at finding a decent pass. He just never seems to get into the positions. But that's Gomez. Bernard, on the other hand, he, he's regressing massively. 
when he first came to the club, I was a bit of a fan of him because when he came in, he looked like he could create and he could score. He could add He went scoring, but he looked like he was getting in the positions too. The last couple of weeks, he's he, he's up there with Balassi, to be honest, and like the 17 18 version of Balassi where he just couldn't kick a ball straight. But to be and, honest, I think to be honest, I think it's worse than Balassi because at least Balassi could hold hold himself up and not get knocked over constantly. No, I've never seen a player get knocked off the ball as easily as Bernard. And I know he's not pretty diminutive, but no, it's still uh, embarrassing no. how easy he gets knocked off it. No, I'm not a huge. I wasn't a huge fan of Bernard before the lockdown. Even I didn't think he'd done anything since the October either. But at least with Bernard, I always thought he could get into good positions. Pick a pass, and even if he went directly contributing, you force a man to take him, and then that would free up space for someone else. But he's just people just look at him and think don't need to go near him. I I listen to fans of other clubs, not Everton fans, speak about Andre Gomez and Bernard, and they genuinely think they're woeful. He watched them and think we've got players who we feel who cost well Bernard didn't cost anything, but have lesser reputations than these two. And they offered so much more. And I, and I agree with them because I just don't get anything from them. I don't think they add to the game. And I want a team of Everton players who add to what we're doing rather than just become bit part players. And I think this has come from, I'm not going to criticise Man City, but they, or teams like that who have like a whole midfielder who doesn't necessarily do much in the game in terms of goals and that, but he recycles the ball well. And that would have been fine if that's what Gomez is, but he's not even doing that at the moment. That being said, guilty Sigurdsson and Tom Davis give him a real run for his money, and I think Sigurdsson probably eclipses him at the moment. Yeah, I think it's... I mean, to be fair, Sigurdsson didn't really get on the pitch for long yesterday and didn't have time to embarrass, him, embarrass himself as much as he did against Wolves, but you know, he still didn't do a lot, did he? He had that one shot at the end, didn't he, where he sort of got deflected wide. But again, he's he's even worse because he's not even passable. I mean, what about Tom that's Davis? What I was, sorry, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, yeah, he's not passable either. The, the midfield options, like you know, Gomez is you know badly out of form. Bernard's badly out of form. But it's like just for Gomez, like what what can he do? Like he's the other two are even worse. Like I'd I'd still start Gomez next game, like because I'd rather have him on the pitch than Sigurdsson. And I don't think say, um, Gomez and Sigurdsson together um, works either. So it's like, and and there's someone watching this now going, Benny Beningami, I think it's time to give up on that. He wasn't even on the bench. It's not going to happen. So I think just a case of your what, dad what, said. What, what, was he? What, I don't, no, he wasn't, I he don't, wasn't on the bench. I don't, I don't, I don't um, think so he was. There we go then. Well, rightly or wrongly, you've got to, you know, you've got to at least, you know, acknowledge that. Carlo Ancelotti knows more about football than than any Everton fan. So you can say must, that must... you can say that, but why isn't he broadening some kids at this stage? Because you know the, there's, not, there's nothing to play for. Uh, well, it depends how you look at it. You know, league position is a thing. You know, like setting standards is a thing. He what he he wants to win these games. I don't think he's he, well. He's clearly not the type of manager we've sat now seen who writes off Ted Rubbers. He wants to win the matches. The players aren't obviously getting the message. The players aren't. The players aren't. The, the players he's picking aren't delivering. So he might as well try something different. Yeah, yeah, but but you've got to look at it in the sense that it's the integrity of the league. If we throw eleven kids from the under twenty threes in, Watford and West Ham are going to be like, what are they? What's going on here? We've yeah. got we've got teams against Villa, but we play Villa and Bournemouth, both who are in the fight of the lives. If we start playing. Me and Terry in midfield, as much as that probably wouldn't be any worse than what we've got, it, it's still to do with the, the whole way the league is shaped and there's points to be aimed. If we get whacked the last two, three nil, and we have 11 kids in, well, people aren't going to look at that anymore positively. We do draw them 1 1 and Tom Davis plays. But it's, it, it's again, it's one of those. I, I think there does need to be, you know, we, we don't really blood enough kids at the moment, I don't think. I think some of the under twenty threes could maybe you know just see what they can do, and if they don't do well, then okay. But we've been embarrassed in three of our last four games, so yeah, no, no. so why not try something a little bit different? I get what you're saying, yeah, but it's just it, he, he has done it though. Like 
Gordon was not a player before the lockdown. Like Brantway was not a, was not a player before the lockdown, and now you'd you'd look and go, well, what did you get out of the um, that little mini tournament of Premier League games? Well, we got two more players there, and we didn't think we had. He sort mm-hmm. of has, but he's. He, I know what you're saying. I would like him to play. You know, well, at least Moyes Keane. I'm not saying he's looked good when he's come on, but you know, I'd like to see him get an actual full game. And I'm not saying a will will play with a full game and he'd be class, but you know what? Why not? Like just play him. But I, I, I think Owen's right. Like you can't just in a, with an allegation battle, you can't just go right then. There's um Markello and there's Adzeran and Beningami playing, and and because you know West Ham and and Watford, especially West Ham, are already a little bit pissed off that they're playing these games and might go down. So you don't want to be getting yourself in any trouble um, by not playing a proper team because it has it has happened before where teams have gone to the Premier League when other teams have not played proper teams. It's that whole that, thing that's, years their, ago. that's their problem though, isn't it? At the end of the day. It's that whole thing years ago when Liverpool were playing Fulham and they were in the battle of Sheffield United and Benitez played Stephen Derby. <laughs> Got yeah. one. Owen Warnock lost the plot, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you say it's their problem. It's it becomes our problem if we do that. I, I know what you're saying. Like, you know, this team's not playing well. So why are we why are we holding them up as these can win the game? But this this is a, this is a manager who's see he's been everywhere, seen it and done it all. Like I understand that questioning the manager when you've got a joker like Silva or Martinez or even Cumin at one point. Um, but when you've got a, a manager like, like Ancelotti, I think, you, you know, no manager's ever be on question. But I think for things like this, you've got to just go, what's the, you know, it, you know, it's a few dead rubbers at the end. He must know, he, he sees them all in Spain and he must not rate Beningamy. He must not rate, you know, a few other players sitting centre midfield because he can't be looking at tickets and doing nothing and pointing and Davies and Gomez getting dispossessed every, game, every two minutes and think, well, I've got a better midfielder there, but I'm not going to bother with him. So he, the, he mustn't be very good. Is, is that where do you think the, the issue lies, that these under-23 players aren't good enough? I mean, Beningham, I know he's getting towards 23 anyway, I think, so maybe his ship sail. But what about the even younger lads? Are they just not ready, maybe? or? Yeah, probably. I mean, he's played Gordon. He must have looked and went, well, he's ready. The rest aren't. Like, he's, he's, he's shown with Gordon that if he thinks he's good enough, he'll play him. I didn't think we'd see Gordon. I thought Gordon would be getting the Moyes keen minutes. Like he'd be coming on for twenty minutes or like you know five minutes at the end. You know, but when the lockdown finished, I thought that's what Gordon's role would be. But he's like our most crucial midfielder at the minute. Like so, he's clearly he's clearly not against playing a kid if he thinks he's good enough. But if he thinks he's good enough, is the key. I think that is it. And I mean, to be fair, Moyes keen. What we have seen hasn't really been good enough, has he? No, um, the issue with Moise Keane is for, for he will do one good thing where he will turn someone and think, go on, and then he'll just kick his eyes or go into stands or just... Yeah, we did, he did exactly finish. that yesterday, didn't he? Yeah, that's the example I'm using, but he does so he does a good thing and then a bad thing. And I, I, As much as I, I do agree, I do think he needs to start, I think possibly Bournemouth for that before yeah, the end of yeah. the season. I, I do worry and think, I, I do wonder if he'll be a Rebel for next season, to be honest. And that's on my opinion. I think that'll be their opinion. Well, uh, I I mean, it's not like Everton fans to be needy. If we signed him last summer, he was meant to be the new Lukaku and a bit of saw comparisons to Nias yesterday. <laughs> it's Everton, isn't it? Oh. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm at the point with Keane where I'm, I'm ambivalent to it. He, he, I think I've said this before, but He's not one I worry about because he's in a position of the team that's quite settled. Like, there's two players clearly ahead of him. Now, you know, last couple of games, they've not been playing well, but big picture-wise, those two, are the, you know, Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison are our two first-choice strikers. So Keane can afford to, you know, come on and, you know, even there play, you know, hopefully from the start and the odd dead rubber, you know, feel his way in. Um, because there's, you know, Touch wood, though injuries, there's you know there's established players ahead of him, whereas the midfield is a crisis right now. You know, like it's that that's a totally different kettle of fish. You someone need you know like the strikers are not a problem at the minute because if they were if we had midfielders who were creating chances and the two of them couldn't score, then you could point the finger at them. But Calvert Lewin's not been playing well the last few games at all, but I just can't blame him because 
got nothing, has he? He's he's get he's getting like one chance a game, and if he's not scoring, he's getting criticised. And somebody pointed out actually during the game yesterday, like noticed Calvert Lewin and Richardson about drifting really wide to try and involve themselves in the game, and that's to the detriment of the scoring chances as well because they they're trying to make the service themselves instead of actually getting adequate service. Calvert Lewin looks tired, like and it's. It's something that, you know, because we're very demanding of the team, no one's acknowledging that, like, you know, fatigue would be a thing. And, you know, because other teams, don't forget, like, Southampton started poorly and are now playing well. We've started well and are now playing poorly. It's, you know, Calvert Lewin is one of probably the most, he covers probably the most grounds of any player on the pitch whenever Everton play. And he's playing a lot and he's not scoring, he's not getting much reward. You know, he's not, he's doing it all for nothing, really. He's not getting any chances to try and score. Apart from the odd one or two, which you know he is fluffing, he's out of form. But I think he looks tired, and this is yeah. why I think Moyes Keane should could probably start, um, even if he don't see wholesale changes. Because even though Keane's not been playing well either, he will be fresher than him. Um, than go, um, I'm addicted to saying Gomez, Calvert Lewin. You've got the thing now. You're looking at Gomez, and there's every bad move. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm still. I'm, even when Calvert Lewin's like skies it over a kick over the bar, it's like that's Gomez's fault. That yeah, well, it's he, strange he, seeing as Paul Pogba. Yeah, no, I'm um, I'm still I'm still not ready to throw me a uh, throw me bad gin for Gomez. Like I'm still I'm still part of the club, but uh, I'm I'm having to hold the ends up and go. Yeah, he, he's not going. He's not been doing well. Yeah, but it's one of them as well. It's it's I keep saying this and. Uh, and People will be sick of me. This is, this is nothing we don't already know. We knew going into these games, we we're going to play four four two with Siggins and Gomez and Davies as the three midfielders. That's going to be really rough, and and I think that and the fatigue and everything else is bleeding onto the rest of the team. Now the strikers look knackered, the defenders, you know, it's overworked. Overworked. Um, the midfielders, the three midfielders themselves are starting to get worse. Like Davies and Gomez didn't start as badly as they're playing now, but it's 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 a cute I think any of our players we made up to see the season finish now just because I don't think they've got much in the tank now. I think is that testament to the poor fitness levels of this team as well. I mean, I know it's difficult to play this many games in the manner that we've been doing it since the restart, but it feels like we're the least well equipped team to play week in, week out like this because I don't know what it is. We always seem to look like one of the most unfit sides in the league. Yeah, you say that, Terry, and I I understand what you're saying about the players being on the last legs and that. But we do have options. If you have a look at some teams like Sheffield United and Burnley, they've got about five players to the name and they're giving a lot more than we are. That's another yeah. good point. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean what you said then, James, like yeah, I don't know whether it's they're not fit enough. Um, in general, or it's the injuries. Like you know, we're asking. How do I say it? I think if either Delf or Gabam are fit, I think we wouldn't see these performances. And I'm not a not a fan of Delf, but an extra midfield body to sort of yeah. Because I think at the minute, um, if Delf would come back fit, if Delf comes back fit, he won't. But if he does, he'll go straight in the team. And it, I think it's. Just by having someone else in there, a fresh pair of legs, it stops you just tiring as much, maybe. Yeah, I, it, it might just you know change the you know the formula in there, but I, then again, Delph's legs are made of paper mache, aren't they? So I don't know how fresh they'd be. Yeah. I don't know. It's one of them. At these last two games, it's like I, I'm just hoping we see more of Brantwaite, more of Gordon, and we see more of Keane from the start, so people can stop asking for it. Be self included. There you go, yeah. Uh, but yeah, on the note of the midfield being bossed, one of those players was John McGinn. I'd have him at Everton, would you? Um, I get it's a similar one for you, but he wouldn't do any worse. But I'm, I'm not sure if it elevates us massively. And I think we need an opportunity now where we get midfielders in who are like really transformers. I think he'd do better than what we've got. And I think if he, if they they they're going down because they're rubbish, but once they if they go down, then there might be an option there. But I think I'd prefer someone else. 
I'm just thinking if there's some sort of a Drisagana Gayes clause in there where we could get him for like, you know, less than ten million. I think that could be doable if we paid it for Dell for pay for him again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I like what you. I I agree with what you're saying. He's a good footballer, but I don't think he's what we need. Uh, he, he plays in a in a three man midfield, so there's no guarantee he'd suit a four four two. And we don't need little creative players in there. We need strong, powerful, put your foot on the ball type players. Like we need, um, we need Patrick Vieira. We don't need Paul Scholes. Like you know what I mean. Like little cre- creative players are not going to fix our our centre midfield issues. So. I mean, Hoiberg, I don't know whether we're going to do a different segment on him because it's, you know, it's pretty official now that we're in for him, but um, the only thing I know about him is he's got really good ball recovery stats, and I think that's... Uh, <laughs> well, we need that. We desperately need that. that. Uh, that's, yeah, that's an important thing. Whether he, whether he moves the needle in the sense of he, he comes in and he's transformational in midfield, it depends on the context because... You know, him by himself might not be enough, but him alongside another midfielder might... might you know, Might work, yeah. Make the difference, but we'll we'll save the talk on that, I'm sure. But um, yeah, let's, let's let's just say I was I was right about uh, Hoiberg's going to sign just because we wave a few bits of Hummel gear in his face and like being a day, and he'll just be like, yeah, definitely, I'm signing for them. It's quality gear, that <laughs> it is. A bit uh, small fit, isn't it? Has anyone has anyone's kits arrived? I know you're uh, short of it, I haven't they, Terry? Yeah, me training shorts of it, but um. Don't usually bother with the tops, but it's a good job as well because everyone's saying that they're, they're a small fit, and I think most things are a small fit on me to begin with, so I don't need to be exacerbating it. That's why. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think we're going off on a tangent again, but I think it's completely understandable when you consider we're looking for positives, and there's not many positives from the actual game itself that we're looking back on. Uh, one of them was the fact that we actually scored the goal. Uh, the award yeah, great, scored it ever. And Andre Gomez got an assist there, which is a, again a rare one, especially I will tell you. Well, I think it's the second assist, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you one. What huge steps for Andre Gomez that? Um, Two he's played games. Him. He's doubled his assist output for the season. Go- Gomez right, has played think... games usually against West Ham, where he's absolutely ran the game and he's not got an assist. How can he play as shit as he did yesterday and get an assist? <laughs> it just makes no sense. That's football yeah, for isn't it? Are we looking at the goalie for their goal, by the way? Pepe Dana? No. Oh, their goal. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Pickford. Oh, Jordan Pickford. Yeah. Uh, well, he did dive the wrong way, so maybe. Yeah, there we go. I don't really want to blame Pickford, though. That's just, oh, you haven't scored a goal yet? All right, we'll sort you right out. Like, that's, yeah. Yeah, I think that was his first Villa goal, so... Charity Case Club, we love so. I thought we were going to give them their first away clean sheet, but uh, that, that, yeah, well, that's what I was saying. I th- that's why I'm astonished we got that goal at the end. Tell you what, if they were a Premier League side, we'd have been beat soundly because they are. Uh, we were shite, but they they were shite and all. Like uh, there's there's a reason they're going down. Any other team in this division, probably not included, would have beat us yesterday. Yeah, yeah, probably about right there, and yeah, just. It's a tough one, isn't it? Uh, there was, like you say, one big positive, and that was Brantwaite, wasn't it? Yeah, he played very well. Um, I, the thing, the thing I like about him is he looked really comfortable on the ball. Normally, when you buy players from like League Two, the like fourth division football, sometimes the technical ability when they first come into the team, it, it's a, it needs time to get used to. But he looks a really good footballer as well as a defender. Who doesn't know how to handle himself against? I know some matters not a, not great, like, but he's still a he's still a tough customer when he comes to, like holding the ball up and that. And I thought he did really well. Yeah, I mean, even Keenan Davis come on after that as well, and he's a very physical, pacey player, and he handled him okay as well. I thought. Well, it's, it is Keenan Davis, like, but it is still difficult when he comes into a team. I think he did reasonably well against Jimenez on Sunday, so I, I feel like. It's all that's positive, more of that's it? more of a benchmark to go by, I'd say, than Samantha yeah. or Keenan Davis. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I um, they said that on commentary last night, but I agree with it. That's one thing with all the bad recruitment got, that's gone on at Everton for the past five years plus. That's one thing that we've been really good at is plucking, you know, young players out of the lower leagues and you know, and you know tearing them around. You know, like obviously some of them took longer than others, but now if you look at our team. 
some of our key starters at Calvert Lewin, Holgate, you know, you'd go to John Stones. Hopefully that um hopefully Branthwaite can be another one of them. I don't want to like get too excited for him, but it, it was it was a surprisingly good performance. Some kids come on in a disaster aren't they? He came on and um, he looked comfortable. You know, he got clattered early by Mings going up for an aim. Not clattered like he landed on top of him, didn't he? And like <laughs> I, I, I thought he handled it really well. I thought, yeah, the physical I, aspect he did really well, didn't he? He's got a few bad habits. He's, you know, he's, he's still tra- he's got that league lower league thing where he's trying to suplex the striker every time. So he needs to. <laughs> he ca- he gets to he gets very tight to the man, and it's like better strikers are going to make you pay for that, mate. So you need to be careful. And he's he's trying to have the shirt off everyone, but he was good. He was a bright he was a bright point in the game, and he, he you know. Probably will go on loan next season, but he could be one to watch, you know, going forward. I'll say, alternatively, we could just stick him in midfield for the next game, and at least we know we'll actually put a foot in. Yeah. Yeah. Or play him and in, in Keane and throw Holgate in if he's back in midfield. Yeah. And any of that, just, just someone who'll tackle in midfield, please. I'm just desperate to see someone put a tackle in in the middle of the park. What I don't get about that is when Tom Davis first came in the team, he looked really mobile and like he could get up off the pitch and put a tackle in. Now we can barely string a pass together. I don't know if it's just what we do to these players. Yeah. He was playing in a thing. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Well, Davis, you've got to remember, when he first came in the team under Koeman, was playing in a middle three with Idrissa Gay and Schneidlin, and that was when Schneidlin was playing dead well. So his job was just to go beyond the last man and get involved in the attacks. So there's no there's no wonder he looked all right. Then Davis now is playing in a two man midfield, having to be the yeah. stopper. He, he can't do it. I, we now know, you know, what position is he? What type of midfielder is he? He plays in the middle three, and he's the one who goes forward. Whether he's good at it or not is is up for debate. But we don't play that system. And if yeah, that's did, the best form is. Yeah, if if we if we played that system, he wouldn't be the one doing it at this point. But when he had, you know, a, a, when he had Drissa Gay and Schneidel and both playing well, and he was his job was to go forward from that platform. That's when he looked good, and we haven't played him like that since we've had him as a deep midfielder. And he's not a good enough footballer. He's not a good enough tackler. It doesn't suit him. So I think that's the we've now answered the question about Tom Davis. Where does he play? A position we don't play, so I, I, unfortunately, I think he's probably going to. Whether it's this summer or the one after, I think he's probably going to be on the way out because he doesn't fit what we want. Uh, could he be one of the players? That, I know there was rumours that it could be a swap deal if we go for this hoy beer. Could he be one of the players involved in that? Maybe. I think he'll be John Joe Kenny. I think they need a right back, don't they? Uh, possibly, yeah. Yeah. yeah they want, they want, You've got Kyle Walker Peters and they all love him, but I can't imagine Spurs being good to deal with money wise at the minute. So maybe it is John Joe Kenny. Could be Walcott. It won't be anyone like Bezic or you know someone like you know on FIFA where you just throw in some yeah. fringe players. On fr- you throw in fringe I, I players. Love, I love doing that on FIFA. It's like the my favourite part of career mode is just been off dead. We'll just part of swap deals. <laughs> it won't be anyone who, who who we're not seeing playing because Southampton. Why would Southampton want a player? Who he couldn't even scout. It'd be someone who's played for us recently. So I think it will be someone like Walcott, John Joe Kenny. It could even be Michael Keane, but you never know. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'd rather it not be Michael Keane because he's one of the few players who's looked interested in this resumed season. Yeah, but if you're a Southampton fan and you're saying you're taking an Everton player, there's very few you'd say, yeah. Oh, Keane's, probably, Keane's probably one of them. Yeah, fair enough. But uh, yeah, I think the fact that we've ended this show really by going on to transfers tells you about where we're all got our attention turned to now. I think the Premier League season in itself has pretty has been over for a while for us in our last couple of games. All eyes are on how we're going to improve this absolute shit show of a team. So yeah, it shouldn't be any surprise that we've finished on that. It's like you say, we're finishing on a bit of a high because anything's better than that. Uh, game that we watched yesterday, <laughs> apart from the Wolves game. Yeah, that's true. But there you have it, guys. Everton won, Aston Villa won. Let us know how you feel about this. Is there anything that we didn't touch on? Just let us know what you think and where we go from here. Give this video a like and subscribe to the Toffee Blues for more, hopefully more upbeat content, but I can't promise you nothing. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, until next time, thank you for tuning in on the Toffee Blues. <laughs>